uh, joined by Ruffle Bricks and Toby Trigger, who are about to run some worms too for you all. So whenever you're ready, take it away. Thank you so much, Zelda. Yes, so this is um, uh, going to be a all missions run of Worms 2, um, the game which I think the thunder which was stolen from its uh, successor, Worms Armageddon. But hopefully, we're going to demonstrate that this 45 mission speed run is a pretty darn good run in its own right. Uh, I'm joined by uh, another Worms 2 runner, Toby Trigger. Hello there. And uh, yeah, a couple of things we are going to do uh, before we start the game. Um, first thing, well, as well, let's just select our team and go into the missions. A lot of people don't know how to find that in this game, but uh, uh, just select one team and you're fine. First thing we're going to do is um, I'm going to move the front end up here on my desktop. Um, this is because it will ensure that our cursor respawns over the... Um, uh, the start mission button for each mission, uh, which means we can just mash through them quickly. And then one thing we're going to do before I start the run is I'm just going to quickly pop into the game and I'm going to do a little trick that we call front end minute. Uh, what we do there is we basically just mess around with the windows for the game, which should ensure that the um, front end doesn't minimize in between missions. Uh, not always guaranteed, so if we end up, if you see that black box of reassurance again, uh, that will be a sign that it did not work this time round. But let's start a run in. Three. Just before you start, Ruffled, yeah. um, there's some complaints in the chat about the um, audio volumes. The game is much louder than you, so people are oh, struggling to again. hear you. Okay, uh, but apparently I am louder than everybody else, so hello, chat. How are you doing? I'll tell you what then, Toby. We'll, uh, we'll let you uh, do the uh, main thing. I'm just uh, uh, bringing the game volume down a little bit in my OBS here, so hopefully uh, that should ensure that things are a bit better. But yeah, keep us posted, gang, and uh, yeah, Toby, let me know if there's any... Anything else we need to do? Uh, right, okay, let's start a run then. Three and a two and a one and a go. So yeah, this is Worms 2. Uh, the object of the missions is we are the uh, team with red names. The enemy are the team with blue names. We have to destroy the uh, the enemy uh, and have one of our team uh, surviving in... Fire! I think I've covered the gist of it, haven't I, uh, Toby? Yes, so as you see, that first turn was an AI turn, so AI gets most of the first turns in this game, but we get a few, and then, um, yeah, the objective is just to kill all the enemy worms, there's no, there's no nuance to these levels, except that means there's infinite possibilities of how we actually complete levels. Yeah. So you can see there, Ruffled lined up a shot, throwing a grenade off of the ground, which allows you to do like a full power shot and know exactly where it's going to go every time to get these kind of recreatable shots. Yeah, and that uh, moved in a few things. It's done this AI manipulation here, whereby uh, Worm 4 has just been shot with a bazooka by Solomon. Uh, they're now going to die on land. When worms die on land, they do an explosion here, um, which will create a hole. And that means we now have a hole we can knock Gooba and Solomon into. Uh, we're now going to throw a grenade over here to try to find the... And I think that is the notch, and then as we throw the grenade, I'm going to jump down here. So Bacon gets knocked into the water with the grenade there, and then Goober and Solomon get knocked in with uh, the worm there. That jump knock technique, we're going to be using that uh, a fair amount in the run. We're going to be using that in the next uh, one as well. And it looks like front end minute did not work, so I'm going to have to have another go at that in a moment. In the meantime, Toby, if you want to talk through this mission. Yeah, sure. So you notice Ruffle kind of straight away shoots from the hip. He kind of aims up one and just instantly fires. And this is to avoid these missions have to spread on the shotguns. Um, it's an option in the in the in the schemes, um, and they use that here. A lot of these missions use very customized scheme things. They're not exactly the default ways these weapons work normally. Um, but yeah, so we are we are already starting to manipulate the RNG by this time shooting from the hips. So we know that shot will always work. You can, and see, then, you can see these. Uh, this format of mission is going to crop up uh, a lot in this. There's seven missions of this structure oh, yeah, where all the good. worms are just standing on girders. And uh, here's a, hey. another jump knock for you just to save a little bit of time. But yeah, we call these the gun girder missions because you have um, a weapon scheme that we call the uh, gunner or sniper scheme where all you've got are like guns. Yeah, and there we go, now the front end manip has Speaking of weapon schemes, this one. Uh, 
starts the uh, trend of uh, shopper schemes in this game, where we have no weapons, so we have to generate them ah, chicken. from uh, crates. Hey, drop me, so, Cody, do you want to talk through this mission? Hey. This is a very tough one, as you know. Oh. Yes, so the oh. first time we've manipulated by um, deciding to drop or not drop certain crates at certain times. And then we've just done our first dud minute. So we forced that mine there to be a dud by performing a certain set of movements. Just because the roping oh. at the beginning was horrible. Oh, so, <laughs> so by forcing that mine to be a dud, all the mines on the mission uh, we can guarantee are live. Only one mine can be a dud. So we can do these little motions to ensure the first mine is a dud. Uh, and that means we can rely on the mines for these kind of advanced strats and we don't have to reset a million runs hoping the RNG suits us and never comes up with a dud. Um, so here we go, Ruffled's groping over the Team 17 logo and he's going to collect the items he needs. So yeah, we don't have any weapons by default in this mission. We have to collect everything we use. There was a fabulous rope knot there. That's much trickier than it looks, that rope knot. And this mission, as you can see, we're doing all of this in one turn. It's not intended to be this way. You're just meant to collect weapons and kill all the worms. It's the fact we can do all this fancy rope knocks and everything is incredible. You can see there, you knock Chegwin into the water via that mine. Um, specific setup. Because Ruffle did the knock that he did, he was able to maintain his angle on his rope. So we didn't have to reset that. And look at that. Look at that mine knock, so he jumps into the mine from a certain angle and that knocks the other one into the water without us having to go over there and somehow rope and deal with him. Incredible stuff, very well done, Ruffled. Uh, so chat are asking if you could just straight up turn down your desktop audio a little bit, yeah, sure. because you're still quieter. Yeah, um, right. Done it down to between 20 and 25, we'll see if that, uh, see if that helps. So yeah, chat, if you keep us updated whether you can now hear Ruffled, um, that'd be great. So on this mission, Ruffled is trying to get a very specific manipulation. It doesn't matter if he doesn't get it, it just really optimizes this level. Ooh! Got it. So he's got the dud. Yeah, that is so a now really this... hard dud minute to do that one. It's uh, There's not really any sort of strong visual cues on that. You just kind of have to feel it by time. But that's good because we have a mine down the bottom here that we also want to... Uh, use, but also this should manipulate a certain configuration of the worms from uh, Check's notes of Solomon here, and uh, yes, so this actually gives us a slightly quicker configuration here. Oh, and this is going to be the first outing of the Kamikaze. Now, look what the Kamikaze does here. It is very powerful in the mission mode, much more powerful than default. Yes, huge. and those two worms are just lined up because of that uh, mind nip. That AI or second turn always happens and they always line up in that perfect position. So it's very well done. Very cool to see that in a marathon. <laughs> yeah, but you notice that like with the kamikazes, they can actually one shot a worm on land as well. Like that's how powerful they are. So we're gonna be using a fair <laughs> number of camis in the game as we go. Um, let's talk a little bit more about the weapon schemes here because uh, we've only mentioned a couple of them so far. Um, Oh, and here's the easiest dud manip in the game, by the way. You just switch <laughs> the worm to, and then walk straight onto that line, and puff, there it goes. We can buffer that input oh, as well. And this is why we want the dud manip here, because we hit that mine there, and it then knocks that mine onto bacon as the dynamite deals with Goober. Um, but yeah, this uh, this weapon scheme in this mission is, uh, we like to call it the Holy Ming scheme, because it has uh, both a... Uh, holy hand grenade and a Ming vase as part of the weapon scheme. It's also the most comprehensive, uh, or well, actually not the most comprehensive, but it, it's probably the best of the weapon scheme because you get infinite ninja ropes in it, infinite kamikazes, uh, infinite dynamite. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty good. And you're going to see the uh, the fabled holy hand grenades uh, right now, actually. So here we go. Sing along. A worm's the fan favourite. Yeah. And as we do that, we do a little rope knock on uh, on Gibbering Fool there as well. Just so that we maximise the number of kills that we get. Now, next one, uh, next mission, we've got a very tricky little AI manipulation in here. So, oh, and I've missed that, so let's try it again. Toby, take over. These are the brand new to the game um, star strats here, where we are, we are getting very, starting to get very frame perfect with our execution. We don't have task tools or anything, so we're working out these frames manually. And that looked good to me. 
Uh, Let's see what the wind is, because that's... Okay, wind looks good. That's usually Fantastic. how we tell if we get the right AI manip or not. What we want Gibbering Fall to do here is shoot worms two and four uh, down through this country, which I, I don't know if anyone in chat can tell me what this country is. We've been trying to find out like, on <laughs> Google Maps and that, where this could possibly be, but it's no, it doesn't ring any bells. Um, but yeah, so here we go. Shoots four and two down into this corner there, and that's how we know we've got this right, because then this is basically a guaranteed two-turner if we get the following okay. shots correct. So I'm just going to oh. jump up on here, drop down, and first shot here just to knock Gibbering Fool along a bit. I knew it would get me. And he's lining that up with okay. using the terrain as a marker. And then there we go. Uh, using the big hitboxes from the bullets there to knock both of them into the water like so. That mission used to be uh, at least a turn longer, but uh, that was a lovely little uh, AI manipulation strap from Mad Black there that ensured we got the correct spread on the Uzi on the first turn there so that you can always get that double kill. Yeah, big shout outs to Mad Black for that very cool strap. Ah, that's a chicken. Yeah, most of the, most of the really good straps in this game are going to be from him, just FYI. So. <laughs> Uh, this is another it's been a great cook. Sorry, oh. ruffled, sorry. I was going to say, this is another shocker mission, this one. Uh, we can't really do quite so much rope knocking on this, although we are going to do a little bit. But here, what we're doing is we're actually doing certain things at certain times here to manipulate a certain crate drop. Ah, that's a chicken! Um, so the crates are supposed to be random, but here we've actually... That crate there is the one that I've basically been trying to manipulate, because that contains an airstrike, which is an aerial weapon that we can use on pretty much anywhere in the terrain. So this now, this shot here will show how pixel perfect this game is. By nudging along one pixel at a time, Ruffle's able to set up this shot where knock into him and knock into him. So you're able to fling your worm and use it as a projectile weapon as well as knock into an enemy worm using the huge explosion knocks that the, the weapons in the single player mode do. Uh, Ruffled as well, if you could turn down your desktop audio just a couple more <laughs> bits <laughs> next time you get a chance. Yeah, just like uh, it, should, it should then be perfect. I just want I just want you all to hear Bjorn Lin's fantastic hey. soundtrack <laughs> to this game. That's the it is that's incredible. The main reason. So here we've got the airstrike and the rope knock combo. So we have retreat time after you use a weapon, um, and you can do that. You can do other actions in that retreat time. You might hey, jump knock into a worm, or in this case, rope knock a worm. Yeah, we just sail through that mission. But you need to be already on the rope in order to be able to use the rope during the retreat time. You can't like fire it uh, if you if you're not on the rope. So that's why we do those moves whilst we're on the rope. So this one, this is um, another one where so we're going to be trying some big time AI manipulation here. So setting up a cami here. Uh, might have been slightly early on that. What we tend to do is we set that cami off at 56 seconds, but we do a little vertical jump there as well just to manipulate the uh, AI. What you get here is you get a half wind to the right. The wind gauge is in the bottom left, uh, bottom right hand corner, by the way. Um, and that guarantees this bazooka shot from uh, Solomon. Uh, now what we're going to do is another cami at a very specific time, this time at 57 seconds. Oh. Now let's see. What we're trying to do is we're trying to manipulate Gibbering Fool into doing a self-kill. There's two self-kills that we can do, and that crate is actually a, usually a good sign because this might indicate he gets a self-hit with the bazooka, but let's see what happens. There we go. Yeah, beautiful. So that saves that's the us. the fastest one that can do. Yeah, that's that's fast. There's also a dynamite they can do. And watch this. We're going to break the cameraman. Watch this. Wait. And cameraman, no idea where to look. <laughs> There's so Worm much happening on everywhere. that cami that, like, it just... It's just looking at his director <laughs> thinking, am I fired? What's going on? <laughs> Again, it's really cool to get the, the uh, that crate fall in a in a marathon, so you can see the most the fastest version of that mission. But it's, it's, it's hard to consistently get that crate to fall. Normally, What's he'll just plant the dynamite and blow himself up, which yeah. is very nice, very, very giving of the AI. Sometimes they do a mine, though, and when that happens, they kind of get away with oh, yeah, does, not okay. hitting themselves. You have a super sheep to back up, but obviously it is it is slow. Oh, so here, Ruffle is nudging over to do this little combo kamikaze, which takes care of three of the worms. We only have two worms left. It's a really nice mission, I think, if you're starting out um, learning worms too. I think it's a cool mission to learn to kind of 
get used to the game. Yeah. And this is a this is a cavern mission as well. We can't move our camera beyond this kind of closed in space. So you notice we actually like knocked it. one of the worms out of bounds with that cami. So now we're just going to do set up a little rope knock here. Two seconds made there, and then just <laughs> knock them into the hole that we just created. Once again, using retreat time to our advantage to perform an extra what action. Doing? Yeah. And plopping them into the water, which is huge in this Don't game. Uh, grave damage animations, unlike the other second generation worms games, take five seconds. So as much as possible, we are trying to plop the worms into the water. And yes, plop is the official term for drowning a worm. Here, this mission is an artillery mission. So all our worms are stuck stationary, um, much like competitive BNG modes. Um, and again, we are going to hit tab now at a certain second to manipulate the AI and the wind uh, to come up with a favorable outcome for us. Looks good. All right, so let's see. So what we want here is we want rightward wind on the next turn, and we got it. So what happens here is this manipulates Chegwin, or Chegwan, as uh, he's sometimes known, into firing a bazooka at four, and this bazooka is fairly inept, so it means that it actually knocks uh, Chegwin and Wiener down to the oil drums here, and you can probably guess what might be about to happen now. Uh, if you can just find the right notch, there we go. So doing a cluster bomb here, because this gives us a nice little spread that should hopefully keep all of the worms within the area of the flames. They're a bit dispersed though, so... Newton has survived, but might possibly get some grave damage here from from Chegwin, so let's see. Yeah, especially if Chegwin gets knocked over through here. Oh, he's just out Not sure, damage. yeah, not sure if we're going to get seven damage there. So let's see. These were the aforementioned um, grave animations. Ooh. Nice. Okay. No, very good. Uh, in Worms 2, it only shows you up to the max health damage, so you don't see above. So we're not getting every piece of damage perfect here. It just doesn't. If it's over the Worms health amount of damage, it just shows the exact okay. Worms health. So if they had 100 health, it wouldn't show you you did 150 damage. This level is one of the pivotal ones to rooting the entire game. So many discoveries were made on this level. The aforementioned um, dub mine minips and so on all came from this level. And what we do here, it's quite on rails, um, what we do here, and it's, <laughs> it looks pretty cool. It's low, this, we call these low island maps, and they tend to be pretty difficult to, to get all the worms dead and to knock them all in the water. But there's the dud. Oh. And we're now going to set up some of these worms based off of that dart. So we shot uh, the two on the left into the water there and we've moved Sheepnut and Marlon right next to worm six. So that's the first piece of the puzzle. Now what this is going to do is this is going to manipulate Raptor into uh, taking the turn here. They're going to walk to the right, they're going to stand on Five's head, if we've got this right, and they're going to fire a bazooka down at Worm 8, and the bazooka should keep Worm 8 trapped in the crater that uh, they make. And that's important because that will then set up another piece of AI manipulation on the uh, following CPU turn. But we do need to get this right, so... Here yeah, we are looking to stand on the worm's head and fire at a specific time. Hopefully send the two worms to the left and manipulate the AI to help us out. And that was just a little tap of the bazooka there. A lot of the shots that we have in this game like full power ones but that one we just hit the space bar quickly and fire. for the best. And that manipulates this grenade into uh, creating a pit there. Which means that now what we can do is I can just get Raptor off my head, get off, uh, and then throw a one second grenade there to get Strut in and then jump into that mine there to knock Raptor in to the hole that he created. We're using the background gradient lines there to use as a terrain marker to line up that shot. Um, just before we explain that further, because there's a lot to explain with that, uh, since this is one of the easier missions in the game, um, some of the video feed ruffled is cut off a bit so they can't chat can't see the um turn timer uh, nor the uh, nor the wind okay that's i'm not sure if we can change that's that that's not something it looks fine in uh, obs so it's not something i'm going to be able to um change i don't think 
I have quickly checked for you, and we're unfortunately not able to get that in frame, so sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to just what? tell people what the wind is. Yeah, we'll keep you informed, chat, the wind and the, the turn time. So in the bottom left, there's a counter that you guys can't see that's counting down seconds, and we use that to time a lot of shots to make sure the AI behave the way we want to. This, again, is probably one of the easiest missions in the run. Very nice. Probably the second, um, the second easiest gun gunner mission, I would say this one. Oh yeah, um, Again, we've got that that jump knock there that you do just to uh, kill uh, that worm off there. That uh, we do that from about a third of the way back on that girder there, and that's very important because it enables two to survive. We want two to survive because it means that this worm who's shooting here is distracted from shooting at worm seven. And that's important because Seven is in a great position here for us to just fire an Uzi at Bumper and hey. then uh, do a jump Ow. knock down onto Newton. We use Uzi there because it's just one of the quickest weapons in the what game to actually use the killer worm. Yeah. Um, it's it's, it's very short, the animation for it. Special delivery! Alright, this one. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> More rope knocking action. <clears throat> so again, shop a mission we need to acquire the weapons we're going to use on site and once again it's not really intended to be done in in one turn or our, like first proper turn we're going to try to manipulate that dud which is very handy and here we got raptor um, kingston and sheep nut and we're going to try uh, yeah, that, that's, um, yeah, that was the problem there, is that, like, so, we are going to use um, the ninja ropes to stop ourselves from falling down uh, into the water, but in order to be able to do that successfully, you need to aim your rope uh, before you end up in that position so that it is aiming upwards, and because that knock was a bit too yeah, overcranked, then, unfortunately, hey, I, I went me. down when I shouldn't have done. Yeah, being aware of where you set your... Hey. Ninja rope is vital, and here we don't have a choice as to where, so we have to be very specific with this first rope knock. Let's get it right. Okay, that's that looks very good. Didn't get see here, Ruffles now set them up. And that's okay that he didn't go in the water there, because we're just going to knock both in now anyway. And you have only a limited number of ninja ropes in this. We have like six or well, five repeat swings beyond your first one. We only have so many to start with. Yeah. Here we're going to go over to Marlon, and we're going to—you can see there's a mine there. We're going to gingerly avoid that mine. The mines have kind of a diamond radius hitbox oh, that's kind of pulsing it. once every ten frames that we need to—we need to avoid. Um, but yeah, that's that 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 knocking is tough. And this dynamite there just sends Marlon in, and it knocks a mine into uh, the two enemy worms on the left there, which is. Uh, why we wanted that dud manip pills. just to guarantee that those mines were live. And sometimes you get grave damage there, but depending on the mine frame, you don't really got the not one, which is the faster one, which again is cool yeah. that that's happened in the marathon. Yeah. Um, here we've got a similar strat at the beginning of this level where we scroll up to the right and we make sure the crate <laughs> is falling before we then let it go to again manipulate the AI to standing in the positions we want it to. We're going to oh. set up a little dynamite knock here. Very specific setup, nudging along, doing some back jumps. You saw actually at the beginning of this mission one of the most uh, controversial features of this game the, uh, the booby trapped crates, which is a, a feature that I think was wisely removed from all subsequent Worms games. But um, yeah, by uh, dropping the crate at the time that we did, that guaranteed that we got the, uh, the booby trap when the AI grabbed it. It's not all Worms games work like this. This game is a very specifically a manipulatable RNG system. Uh, and that's why Booby Trap Crate's actually in the single player run. The speed run actually quite cool mechanic because we're manipulating them, we're manipulating the flames to make sure Worms end up in certain positions. That's great. Oh yeah, there's yeah. like, so th there's a, I mean, probably only scratch the surface of what you can do in this game with the strats that we've got so far. Watch this. But we started running it last December. Um, yeah. It hadn't really been speedrun before, nor rooted, so it was fresh, untrodden snow, and it's been so much fun between me, Ruffle, Mad Black, Charles, Psychotropic, rooting this game, figuring everything out, and um, realising how much depth there is in this. It's great. Uh, 
So again, we've got a little rope knock on Zorky here. The little tendril of that terrain just allows you to stay up. Um, and then we've got to get rid of Butch. It's a little super sheep. Just gives the power. Yes! Okay. Yeah, you know, I, I've seen that before. Sometimes there's that really slow slide there that makes you think, oh, we've, we've fluffed it, but no, we're, we're good. Ruffle's very brave. He always does that off the ninja rope, as I would... Uh, I would drop off. <laughs> I don't uh, always. Some, faster. Sometimes I can't get the right position on that rope, but uh, yeah, when I can, I'll go for it. So this one we keep in the background on because I'm going to use the uh, leaves or, uh, in here to um, time uh, try and time an AI manipulation coming up. Once you set the background in this game, it is then always at the beginning of every mission. It doesn't remember your previously used oh. background, um, and so we have to using the insert key, manipulate what that background we need for each strat. And that looked good to me, so that we specifically timed that kamikaze um, to make sure Raptor... The wind is going to the right for uh, the chat, just, <laughs> so, so, yes. just in case. Uh, and uh, that means he's going to do this shot. What are you thinking? Um, <laughs> So yeah, they can, you can always guarantee that if you get the kamikaze timing right on the, uh, the first turn there. That's the fun thing about routing this game, you're not only routing your own turns, you're routing what the AI is going to do as well. Um, and we just rope knock him down. There's a little thing called rampart skip where when you do that knock you can end up in the ramparts, that little castle bit, and save a couple of seconds on the roping over. Uh, it's very hard to get you to a very specific angle, but it's Yeah, it's, we didn't get it. I think we should reset the whole run. Yeah, <laughs> that's the connoisseur's choice. Um, and here's the second outing. There we go. Yeah. The fact you can do that mission in two turns is astounding. It's very cool. Okay, so here's um, I think the first pretty scary gun gear mission in the game. This one. This has some pretty tough shots in it try and get do it and also it's quite unforgiving you'll notice the enemy's first turn here they actually kill off two of our worms and there's absolutely nothing you can do about that you just have to watch them go in that's a a perennial feature of the game um, so we do have a slightly depleted workforce on this uh, but hopefully we're gonna get around with this with this first shot Fatality. yeah so we're lining up we're using these background terrains to help us line up different shots we're firing them at certain times to make sure the AI is going to behave and do what we want it to do. You get two shots with the shotgun in this game. It has so much utility. And now this is, uh, we're trying to manipulate a, uh, a strat here that I like to call the Grace Jones. So you notice there's Vincent there, and on the right uh, we've got Bumper. Uh, Vincent's going to shoot Worm 5, and then he's going to shoot Worm 7. And what we want Vincent to do is... Uh, Pull up to the bumper, baby, and shoot him in the sea. So let's see if he actually does it. Here we go, it's going down, slightly too low. Oh no, no we are, we got it. We got there we go, we got good. the Grace Jones. Again, great to see these straps in America. Oh, I thought that's that was going to be too high then, but like, yeah, that's okay. Right, so this is, this one. this one's now more or less in the bag. And oh, I didn't get the. Uh, you can shoot Vincent into Wiener there, so you don't have to do that jump knock. It doesn't really matter that much. It's maybe like ever so slightly quicker. Oh, you do it, Pillag. Just to quickly say, at the end of each of these missions, as soon as you hear victory, um, Ruffled is Alt F boring out of the main client. Uh, so we go straight back to the menu, and press space bar, and then either click or use five on the numpad to instantly select the next level. So. It's really swift to go from level to level because we can do those things so quickly. And here, Ruffle's going to teleport at 46 seconds. I think that was a late 47. Slight, slightly early, yeah, but we might. Okay, so that's the crate. That's the first crate we want. We also want to teleport here from Mechanic because you notice this is one of the shopper missions we can't really do with rope knocks for hopefully obvious reasons. Um, this looks like it should still work. Yeah, I think there's, there's often leeway over the seconds. Hey, we can... So that crate there contains a kamikaze, hey, and then this one contains a cluster bomb. 
And we're using the cami here. Creating a hole there to uh, knock Raptor and Scrut in. And it also magically knocks uh, Mechanic into the center of the O there. Um, and Marlon here is manipulated into basically just forfeiting the turn. Because there's nothing they can do there. And the other crate that we got was the, uh, sorry, the, other crate we got was the Cluster Bomb, which we're going to use uh, now. And just, oh, wait, that's a, uh, that's a ninja right. Let's set the Cluster Bomb. Here we go. I wonder if that's going to affect the uh, the spread here, because this game is notoriously um, uh, fickle as far as the RNG goes. The slightest thing can send it off base. Looks like we should be okay, though. Mechanics died from the cluster bomb, and Marlon's gone into the water yeah. as well. Because there could have also been a subpixel issue there, and we get as we get later into the run, subpixels become more and more important. Um, but the ninja rope can change what subpixel you're on, but it all worked out very well there. Mm. Um, this one is another shopper mission, and this one is uh, pretty rope knockable, but we're going to take a slightly different track. Yeah, so there's lots of different options for what you do on some of these levels. So, so open ended to root. We're going to eat this first rope knock, and we're going to go over and get this crate, avoiding the mines. These mines are very treacherous. Um, and we're using this like little edges or oh, blimp. We're using the ledges along the bottom of these. I think, oh no, that might be slightly too far. No, we got it. Yeah, you got it. We got it. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a very specific, very specific kind of like position. You need Gambit in for that fire punch to work, and we got it on the first knock, which is uh, very pleasing. What Ruffled also did there was he cancelled the animation, so all these F4 row weapon, row weapons, the Kamikaze, the fire punch, the Dragon Ball. If your worm is in the air when he uses it. The animation's cancelled. You save about a second. It's all these little bits of tech that save bits and pieces of time. Because it cancels the animation and the sound effects. So, um... It doesn't work with prod, though, I tried. No. Uh, so... <laughs> yes. Right, so this is, uh, I think, roundly yeah, agreed to be it. one of the worst missions in the game, this one. So, Toby, if you want to talk about why that is. It, we don't have worm select on this mission to start with. So yeah. we're going to want certain ones of our worms to actually get killed off by the AI so that we can advance our turn to the worm we actually want to use. There are so many branching paths that are possible in this level to get a consistent strat that's always going to work is extremely difficult. Ruffle's going to be using, do you see the oil drums on this mission kind of have a little bounce up and down? And he's going to be using those to time certain shots. I'm um, actually not with this one. I'm doing a... Ooh, yes, this is going to be different strat. 37 seconds on this. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> that's nice. slightly later than intended, but it's it's fine. What this does mean, though, is it might um, it might make sheep nut a bit uh, difficult to deal with later, though. So I've got a free shot there, so I'm going to use that on Kingston. It's not really necessary to do so, but um, but what this means is that sheep nut is the worst worm in this mission, possibly the worst worm ever born. Um, <laughs> But he's behaved there. What we actually wanted was that to happen because when Worm 5 gets shot into the water like that, Sheep Nut then just drops down and does a kind of waste shot on Worm 4 here because he can't think of anything else to do. Um, and that means everything's really lined up for uh, the rest of the mission to go pretty well. Sheep Nut can do other things. He can shoot uh, Worm 5 into like uh, less beneficial positions. And uh, if that happens... That's quite frustrating. Um, the hitboxes of the shotguns are particularly strange in this game, by the way. Um, you'll notice that um, the, the, they actually, they, the, when you hit a worm with the shotgun, they, are, they travel in the same direction as how you shot. So there's nothing like, they don't get blown away from the explosion or anything like that. It'll just, whichever direction you shoot with the shotgun, that's the way they go. That is, okay, that's rare. <laughs> right, Worm 4 doesn't usually get killed off there, so this might be a little risky. We need to see if we can get past Mechanic. Okay, we... Oh, no, we can't. Ooh. Oh, that is... Okay, that is very dangerous. Okay. We, right, we might have to reset hope the this one. doesn't go feral. <laughs> yeah, I should have shot down from above. Okay, we're fine. We're, we're good, fine. yeah. Thank God for that. The AI sometimes doesn't know what to do, and luckily that time, it did not. 
Mm. So yeah, with the with the recoil, yeah, you don't get recoiled back from a shotgun. You go with the direction if you get hit with it yourself. You kind of recoil forward, which I think was fixed in Worms Armageddon, if I remember Partially. Right. Well, actually, it still happens the same way it yeah, went with the uh, enemy target, but, like, yeah. your worm actually uh, bounces off the explosion. So it's a, it's a weird little compromise they've done. Uh, this yeah, mission this... is um, not a gun girders mission, actually. It's the only girders mission in the game, which is actually a shopper one instead. So you notice it's just crates dropping. Uh, we only need one crate, and it's incredibly easy to manipulate. It's that that crate there. It's very hard to not get that crate. You kind of have to go out of your way to not get it. But it, it does, it, of course, contain the kamikaze. And uh, use that to just clear the remaining three worms as they're all in a straight line, like so. The only trick to that level is when you set your rope angle, the kamikaze also sets. It only has a couple of discrete angles, but sets at a 45 degree angle. So you need to remember to put that angle down, otherwise you can very easily lose a run there. Yeah. Now we are going to use uh, oil drum for a cue in this one, although I'm going to say that it is a particularly tough bit of AI manipulation coming up, and it's not a strat that I've managed to pull off that many times, so <laughs> we, uh, we'll see how it goes. But yeah, this is, um, this is a... a kind of tricky one. Um, also, this contains, I'd say, the joint most excruciating enemy first turn of the game. This dynamite here, well, you think Seven has got away with it, but again, just the slow slide of doom. Which makes some of these levels very frustrating to root because we don't have task tools. We have to sit through those little intro turns every time. So yeah, it's exciting to see these new strategies come out since the last time we did this at a marathon. Um, Robert's already pulled off quite a few, and let's see what he does here. Yeah, so that there, we use the kamikaze there to line up a diagonal angle on the bazooka, uh, so that we could get that double kill shot in. Now, if the strat has gone right, then it's Gambit who's going to take the turn here. Uh, it hasn't. Okay, that's fine. So we can default back to the old strat pretty easily in this situation, but... Uh, what would have happened is Gambit would have um, done a mine on Worm 8 and then lined up with Stavros in a way that we could actually kill them both off with a kamikaze. But, not today. It just seems weird the way the AI selects their worms. It basically like tests each worm's action and then quickly scrolls through to the worm it actually wants to use and then it will take the action. Um, so so here yeah. we go. That little jump he did there onto that kind of devil horn is actually quite hard. Um, and you notice I was actually flicking through for the parachute there as well because I used that uh, usually to guarantee the um, that jump works, but I, I didn't mm. get that far. Oh, yeah, it stomped a bungee. But that's a little trick I didn't know. I'm learning things today. It's great. Yeah, yeah, you can just float onto that horn there. Right. I remember trying to show uh, a, 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 a screenshot of that horn actually on Discord, and they wouldn't let me do it because apparently they thought it was an indecent image. So. Anyway, less of that. Um, so this uh, this mine here is gonna is not quite the mine I would have liked. Sometimes they put Stavros. Uh, sometimes Stavros puts the mine next to Worm Eight, and uh, you actually get a hole down to the water there. But that's okay. And here we're gonna use uh, big uh, big favorite in uh, my chat when I do the runs. The baseball bat. The baseball bat has quite a big hitbox in front of it, so as long as the worms are generally there, you can hit a lot of them and fling them off the map. And notice in the retreat time there, Ruffled has moved worm free all the way up, um, normally to try and <laughs> get yeah. the worm to try and hit worm free instead of that, so that's not what we wanted to happen. Yeah, I'm not really quite sure. I think we're going to have to do these individually, because yeah. there's no real way we're going to be able to um, get them together now. So here's an early introduction of... Uh, Cluster trick, which we are going to use as part of strats later on in the game. But basically, the cluster trick is you've seen the cluster bomb already, you've seen that the clusters from the bomb just come out and spread around the landscape. But if you um, stand on the edge of a worm and drop the, uh, the cluster bomb underneath your worm's bottom, then uh, your worm actually absorbs all of the cluster explosions in one very contained and very powerful explosion that can pretty much one shot uh, any worm you used to be able to just place the cluster bomb on top of the worm but team 70 actually patched this out in the 90s this game came out in 1997 
and that was patched out in 1999 but not patched out completely as you can see we can still do a version of it but this version of it has a thing where your worm gets sacrificed in the process so it kind of makes it a, a bit fairer although whether that would actually change the run if allowed i'm not sure i've actually recently set up a windows xp machine with worms 2 on it so i'm thinking of trying to Maybe do a couple of cheeky runs on original hardware. It's so, very interesting. I got my uh, I got my worm physics mixed up there a bit. I was trying to do that um, bazooka there to get Stavros in, which I think would have worked in Worm's arm again. But didn't work there, so we uh, we brought our, our friends the super sheep out there just to fly around and get them in for us. And now this one has a brand new strap to it since last time we did this in a marathon. Um, so hopefully we get this right. In the old strap we used to kamikaze all the way across. We used to like travel all the way across the map and kamikaze all the way back where we came. And it looked really cool and it was a really exciting strap. Somehow this strap is kind of even cooler. Um, and it's going to involve us doing slight bits of RNG manipulation to the clusters of a weapon but not plus the bomb, as you'll see in a second. Here's the Ming Vase, another fan favourite. There we go. So, yeah, what you were doing there is I was uh, dropping that Ming Vase at a very specific time and in a very specific position there, so that the spread of the, uh, the shards from that uh, very expensive antique actually kill off all three of the enemy worms on the left hand side of the map. Watch this. We then get this uh, little bazooka shot from Stavros here which kills six off but that's fine. Um, and then we are now going to once again call upon the Lord's favourite projectile to help us out uh, on this bit. This bit of the strat relies on, we use certain techniques to get worms into certain positions consistently and this one relies on just firing that ninja rope into the ground so that And there we are, it just clears all the remaining ones. And then whilst on the retreat there, we do a little rope knock into Stavros as well, which I thought I'd messed up, hence my kind of grimace when that happened, but no, we got it. <laughs> it was a nice slow entry, but because another worm entered the water later, it didn't actually lose us any time, that, that worm going in slowly, so that was fantastic to see. This, okay. this is a new strat here, and this one is, uh, I'm going to say, barely marathon safe, so if this doesn't come across oh. first time, I'm going to revert to oh, hey, that But here, what I'm doing is I'm lining up a cami, and I'm looking for another leaf here to for the timing. Yorkshire. Okay, so it looks pretty good. So he knocks uh, Stavros and Butch out with that cami there, and Flossie and Hot Dog taken a fair amount of fire damage there and Flossie's right next to Hot Dog so that's going to kill him off and it's also going to create a hole so that uh, Worm 4 can actually get above the surface because Worm 2 this is another one where you can't select Worm and Worm 2 is about to get killed by Plopper and there's nothing really we can do about it in this strat um, however this uh, this next turn is very difficult because it requires a lot of rope knocking within uh, a pretty short amount of time. So, Toby, uh, I'm going to let you <laughs> talk through this one. Yeah, it's very subtle rope knocking as well. Um, yeah, the background leaves you used um, allow us to make much more frame-perfect timings for things rather than just basing things off seconds. That's where the kind of the new meta is at in this game, using all these background leaves. So give Plopper oh, a little nudge. Lost a turn. And unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately we took yeah, um, I'm gonna quote unquote that. damage. Mm. But we didn't actually take any damage, but it, end, it just went over the threshold to end our turn. Um, it's interesting, sometimes you can do these big rope knocks that look huge and your own goes flying and you don't lose your turn. And other times a subtle thing like that and you've lost it. Yeah, and it's kind of like... It's, it's, yeah, to be honest with you, I, I don't want to try that again. Because <laughs> it's just... it's. Uh, Hey. It's so easy for this one to go off piece. So, I'm gonna do it's the. It's great uh... that we get to see Patrick now. Yes. So aiming above where the bat can oh. actually aim with the ninja rope, we can actually fire the bat at an angle it's not supposed to do. As long as the crosshair doesn't come on screen, so we're held held right there to um, ensure that his worm, the crosshair didn't come up, he could use the baseball bat. 
I'm sorry to steal that from you. That's one of Ruffles' favorite tricks to explain. No, 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 no. That's absolutely sorry, fine. Yeah. Like, I just want to make sure I get this right. Because <laughs> this is a this is similar to what we were trying to do here, but the setup is just slightly different here, and that we are getting all these worms together. Um, and now we're just going to do a quick little cami there. This is where chat you can join in. Because we have something here available called Butch Lock. Which you wouldn't have got in the new strap, but because Butch over here uh, is now going to get a turn, sometimes he can do a one turn soft lock called Butch Lock. What's going to happen is Butch is going to drop down, he's going to uh, aim a bazooka at six, he's going to think about it, and he's going to jump backwards while he does it. Sometimes he forgets to stop jumping, and it just ends up looking like he's doing some sort of strange cardio routine. So, <laughs> let's just pray. That he behaves, and he is not even not even wow. one jump there. He's just gone straight for the bazooka. So <laughs> there we go. No fun for chat, unfortunately. No not. Very yeah, good for the we, run. Toby likes very to get Toby likes to get chat to tell Butch off like, <laughs> with uh, passive Butch. aggressive repeating of his name. <laughs> but uh, not today, I'm afraid. No fun for you. Okay, so, so we've got to liberate these worms. We're going to use a super shoot to do it. <laughs> I forgot how to use a super sheep. <laughs> I haven't done that strat in so long, I've forgotten what the timing was. <laughs> Welcome to Marathon. So many of the strats have been going so perfectly this run. Oh, it's, dear. Uh, to be fair, this run was going all right until then. So, <laughs> On the upside, we've got a hole. So we can actually get up yeah, there and no um, nice. deal with this lot. And even one survived. Get my hands on them. So, right, okay, so what we're going to do here is, uh, I'm going to, I think we're going to use a dynamite. Yeah. Pop that Tip here. should just about get the oil drum as well. Mind you, we have no, very little in the way of safe worms here, so, um, I actually might, that might be a terrible mistake. <laughs> well, if Stavros dies, then you're okay, I think. Oh, no. I think we'd have to do this one again. Yeah. I should have, I should have dropped the, yeah, okay, I, I'm going to call it here, and I'm going to say that, like, ah, oh, worm, yeah, uh, I do not believe that worm one is going to get away with this, so I am going to start this one over, one more time, let's see, you, yeah, this mission is, um, this is horrible, um, it, uh, <laughs> it, it actually starts a section of the run, that we call worm and corner, um, which is basically from missions 23 to 31. Uh, the game just pulls out all the stops in making this as difficult as possible for you. And once you get through Worm Man Corner, you can kind of breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief. There's some easier missions, there's some missions with a long waiting times, toilet breaks, etc. But mm. this, this just requires a lot of focus, a lot of threading the needle, and a lot of the strats in this game require you to be basically perfect on every turn. And then the time save kind of comes on the last couple of turns that maybe don't are not so on rails. Mm. But if you don't thread the needle, you can lose minutes very easily. Yeah. So it's definitely a game decided in minutes rather than seconds. Yeah, this is really... That's why the estimate for this is actually so high, uh, at least the way I do it. There's some real unforgiving missions in this section of the game and then after we get past worm uh, mission 31 then it actually does it, it does ease up a bit oh dear. i'll take a quick opportunity to talk about worms 2 plus the patch we are running on yes um this allows the game to actually work on windows 10 which you could do before if you did a lot of work but now this patch made by carmundo with contributions from pac-man seagar step s etc has meant that we can actually play this game run it it actually the latest patch also re-enables lan oh here we go now butch oh yeah see there's, we one. Butch. So there's one jump so two jumps we can usually find okay that's fine just the one once it goes beyond um uh two jumps then you are butch locked but yeah that's looking good right let's let's try not to spoon this this time oh <laughs> okay so yeah, the Worms 2 Plus patch has yeah, better. really helped me. We can run this game on Windows 10, online play is back, LAN play is, is back, the whole the whole game works. And it's wonderful to see this kind of little renaissance of Worms 2 take place. 
This was exactly what I feared would happen, by the way. Like, I thought, oh, I better have the backup strat, like, ready, just in case the first, like, the, the, the new strat goes wrong. And then I forgot how to do the backup strat. <laughs> so, it's all good, though. We should be fine. Absolutely. So, next one is... Uh, they would shoot. We haven't talked about the passwords yet in uh, in this game. This game doesn't really have uh, mission titles, but it has passwords. And, uh, yeah, we will... They, did the passwords have a particular function, actually? Not just not just getting you to uh, later levels, but they also give you the lore. The entire lore of Worms 2. And when we get a little bit of time later, we might actually uh, bring it out. Look at the story time with Ruffle Bricks. Yes. Right, so here Ruffled is going to give this little rope knot on Gambit. And we have to do it a certain way to make sure we maintain our subpixel position. Hey. Oh, no, that's not it. Hey. Hey. And hopefully our subpixel main position has been maintained through that. Use the Holy Hand Grenade once again hey. to hopefully do a massive combo shot and to set the terrain up. That's not right. Um, oh, I don't know. Can we can we yolo this? I think we might be able to yolo this. The butch yeah, should always... butch shouldn't still be alive. That's the main reason that's not right. But actually, yeah, I think this is gonna let's let's let's, let's try that again. Yeah. Um, so I think it's definitely a mission where you want to thread the needle rather yeah. than that. You can you can back it up, but it is it is very risky. While we are uh, uh, trying to remember how to do Worm and Corner, Zelda, if you have anything you would like to read out, uh, now would be a, a cracking time. All right, thank you very much. Well, for everyone just joining in, we are Indiethon. Indiethon is a tri-annual charity event showcasing all types of indie games. We are bringing you speedruns of games that you may not have heard of or before that you may not have heard of before, sorry, <laughs> to help Caldwell children with their efforts to help disabled kids all over the world. For more information on our events, join our Discord server by visiting www.discord.indithon.live in your favorite browser. Uh, if you've got anything else you want to read out, because I just messed it up again. <laughs> <laughs> No problem! Um, Indithon Fall Follies is raising money for Codwell children. They provide practical and emotional support for disabled children and their families across the United Kingdom. With your support, they provide services and equipment to children who need them, including powered wheelchairs, therapy tricycles and car seats, as well as sports equipment for talented disabled athletes. They have also started their own brand new, first of its kind, in-house in autism service from Codwell International Children's Centre in Staffordshire, UK. Visit the website at www.caldwellchildren.org to learn more about their amazing programs. Thank you very much. Uh, well, this is a bit different to what I'm normally used to because I don't. You're usually supposed to go down in that. Uh, why do I keep getting this jump so wrong? Right, let's do this, and then a little bit of that, and then wait for the best. <laughs> Yeah, these sub-pixel positions can be very difficult. That'll do. That, that works out. <laughs> that's actually, no, that, is, that is actually what we were looking for, so that's um, that's correct. Oh yes, of course, because you use the new setup, so it looks different to what my eyes expect. There's, it yeah, achieves the same thing. There's two setups you can do for that shot there. One of them doesn't immediately kill Butch, but then uh, another worm lands right next to them and their grave damage knocks them in. Um, so that's a little bit slower in some regards, but it also means the crater is a little bit better defined for the move we're about to do. Um, so what happens here, because of uh, because all the other worms are kind of preoccupied, Flossie has manipulated into coming out of... Okay, this is... this looks different. Uh, I think this is... this should still be alright, actually. It's very workable, yeah. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Right, so what are we going to do? If we haven't mentioned already, this game is extremely difficult. Oh, yeah. Um, it's probably the most difficult of the second generation Worms games, would you uh, agree? Yes, with I would say, like, this. Uh, if you're looking to run um, uh, a Worms game, then I would start with uh, uh, Worms Arm again, really. Because that one, although that run is also a little bit tough, um, it's. I feel like the. Um, the, the what do you call it? The uh, 
learning curve. The learning curve, that's it, yeah. That's a little, it's just a little gentler than this. This one is brutal, basically. And I'm a Worms 2 specialist who's only ever run, run Worms 2, and I would agree with this take that you should start with Armageddon. Yeah. Even right. I think. Because it's like this one, this is not even, I would say also that Worms 2 missions do not make for a particularly enjoyable casual playthrough. Because some of these, around about this point, the missions just get so difficult and so long and drawn out casually. So I've noticed that he um, camied to the left. He specifically turned around to the left to do that cami. It just means the worms go in the water just a little bit quicker. There's all these little subtle tiny time saves in there that you you may not notice um, on a first watch. They're really adding up. This, uh, and we get first turn on this mission finally. Yes, after 19 missions where we don't. Oh. <laughs> uh, so this and one... he teleported. Go on, sorry, Ruffy. Yeah, this is a this, tough eh? mission to route, this one. I think one of the toughest. Because oh. this is a BNG mission, so there's only bazookas and grenades really available and like limited movement apparatus. And some of the worm spawns in this are just like horrendous, which is why on the first turn we did the teleport. That is not correct. So again, another another bit of needle threading here. We're gonna go back and try and get this right. So oftentimes this will we want the left mine to be a dud. It'll often work even if we don't get it to be a dud. Um, these missions are nice to reset because we don't have to wait through a first turn AI. So it it's, doesn't waste that much time to reset these ones. So hopefully we'll actually get a dud on the left. It can still work even if the mine is not a dud on the left. Oh yeah, it was a stab-loss stab you know. manip was the big problem with um, uh, what happened on the, the first attempt. This? Okay, there's a there's dud manip, so that is a bit more promising. It's 33 seconds, isn't it, on this, this move, I believe, Toby? Oh. Let me check my notes. Um, yes, it is. Yeah, cool. Stop this! Hey! Uh, yeah, this mission and the next mission um, are really, they were horrible to route, but they're really nice now um, to actually run. We have very set routes on them. Too. I do have my notes up on the wall, but they're quite dimly lit at the moment, so I can't really, can't really see them without changing my entire lighting state. But this is what we wanted. We wanted this grenade here so that it knocked that mine down onto those worms so that it knocked them both into the water like that. It's the dark arts of... Playing Worms 2 and manipulating this RNG does require a dimly lit room. Um, so there, Ruffled walked off of that worm and he made sure to hold walk off. If you accidentally just tap walk off in any way, uh, then the back jump there won't knock you forward into the correct position. And then, yeah, she's using the bazooka to, to do a combo shot to knock these worms off. And again, it's meaning every one of these AI turns we've kind of scripted. We can, don't directly control them, but it's trying out different moves to make sure, okay, the AI behaves and does, does a favourable thing. Here's another one of those grenade bounces, like you saw all the way back on the first mission in the game, where he's notching up two little notches and making sure that grenade goes up there. You see, when you're using weapons like that, the dial is not actually continuous, it's discrete. And it's like a dial, it's like a safe where you have a sprite change and then four notches. Sprite change, four notches. The top one, I think, has five notches. All the rest of the four. Um, and so all of these shots can be recreatable um, because we can do a specific angle. And here's another cluster trick. You can see it where it's meant to be used. Yes, yeah, this is the first sort of scripted cluster trick we have in the, uh, in the run. Didn't quite uh, one shot Zorky there, but because one takes the full brunt of the damage from the um, from the cluster, then the grave damage then just kills Zorky off. But yeah, Zorky That's the advantage of piling worms. Zorky is the main piling. reason we uh, this mission was so hard to root because their position is just phenomenally irritating in this. And then here, do combo shots. Sorry, Ruffle. And here, yeah, uh, Stab Ross now huddles up to Plopper and Worm Two, which means we can now do another cluster trick here using Plopper to absorb the clusters, and it kills both of them off like so. Being in that position, do we go into the water here, Bricks? I. Does it reach? I think we, yeah, I think we might on this. Let's see. It's slightly quicker if we do. It. There we are. Yeah. yeah. Ever so slightly. Yeah, it probably saves a second or two. And uh, here's uh, the second of the three artillery missions in the game. Um, and 
Because we're going to be starting off with another, another fun piece of AI manipulation. Some proper Darren Brown work coming out here. <laughs> so what we're going to do is uh, going to switch to Worm Five, and uh, going to aim this grenade here, mechanic. I'm going to fire it around about 42 seconds. Uh, when the oil drum there. So Toby mentioned I use the oil drum for strats at some point for visual cues and we do it on that one when the oil drum is expanding upwards on the, uh, the 42 second thing we uh, we fire the grenade there it knocks mechanic down and what we're going for here is a specific manipulation on scrut now you can't see the wind but it is uh, one arrow to the left and that means scrut's going to aim bazooka hoping to get worm five but it's going to undershoot and actually knock himself and mechanic into the water instead very cool to see that again it's a very specific manipulation and we've got it i believe mad black uses a leaf for that one or a background debris and i count 42 e and and I, I fire it on the and of 42. so there's lots of different ways you can time these shots and have a bit of personality between the different runners well mad black did come up with the oil drum thing originally but i, I think, think he... since he since he's uh, found the star straps i think he's he, he, he's relegated oil drums to just being used by people like me <laughs> we can also use the bubbles underneath, but I, I don't, are there any bubble straps left in the game? Uh, bubble straps, no. Uh, just doing a quick four second grenade off the grandpa of a clock here just to get Marlon and Ozzy into the water. So, um, yeah, now the thing with bubble straps is um, bubbles. So the bubbles actually will spawn in a fixed order, but they're actually background specific. And they, I think they also might be resolution specific as well. I could be wrong about that, but um, yeah, it's hard to get any consistent strats with the bubbles these days, just because everyone's no using such different configurations. Uh, now we mentioned that uh, Zorky was in a terrible position in the last uh, mission, and um, uh, similarly Raptor is as well. Um, Raptor is the one where we have to pretty much do a teleport here to get get them killed off because. Otherwise, it's just a real palava. Watch this! Again, because we're in artillery mode, we can't uh, move our worms in this mission. Yeah. And now, trying to avoid another lock here, a phenomenon known as uh, Raptor Lock. That looks very good. It does, but it's not much damage on Raptor is the only problem. So I think we might have to wait for the... Fire! Or, well, because eight, the worm, you, worm 8 is in the wrong position here, I think, so... Do you not think you can plop him in the water from here? Maybe. We'll, we'll try it. Sort of aiming this way, you reckon? Mm -hmm. Nah. Uh, Might get some grave damage here, but... Right, we're going to have to use the banana. We're bringing out the banana. <laughs> so, usually we would uh, finish this... Um, this mission. Okay, that's new. Uh, <laughs> right, well that that actually, I think we probably won't bother with the banana. Really. Oh, I've, I've promised banana. Let's have it. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Good luck, everybody. There we go. Only get five a day there. So yeah, banana bomb is a uh, a kind of jumped up cluster bomb, basically. Um, and you would get fires me. out three little banana looks, oh, which actually are the same size as the original banana. Uh, In this of... scheme, yeah. the banana bomb unlocks after a certain number of turns, so that's why we weren't using it previously. Yeah. And coming up is Gun Girders 4. So here we're trying to get Otis to be a Brotus and take a hit for the team. Yeah. Bye doing certain manipulations there. Yeah, that was a one notch oh. down shot. That jumps and then lines up the cursor with this girder. Fires at a specific second. And jumps. So hopefully if that all went right, we can get the next turn on rails as well. Yeah. Then we'll guarantee that Otis is a Brotus and goes in the water. I think I was slightly early on the first shot there. I don't know how much that's going to affect it. Sometimes these slightly early moves can work, right? You're very late in the second. They still work. I know, like, on behalf of all the... I often get a, a late second that works. Um, so here we're going to try and get another two worms. It's 
Stavros shot here is pretty tricky. Oh. This is basically aiming down four sprite changes, so mm. that's how we how we line up that shot. Yeah, so when the, the thing goes from there to like there, and then there, and then there, that's how we how we measure it. So here Butch is gonna fire towards worm four. Because a weird little quirk of these gun girders missions is the uh, enemy can't really fire below the girder they're on that well. So four's the only worm they can aim at. However, you notice uh, one of his own worms is in the way. So Oh. Okay, so no brotis today, unfortunately. Or brooch, as uh, oh, yeah, no, we also know it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's which one you decide is doing you a favour, the one firing or the one taking a hit for the team. Yeah. This is okay, Notice though. This is okay. How we, 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 sorry, go on, go on. Brooch, as he's called, uh, is really on the left side of that girder, so we have to make sure we, we can very easily not kill him with that shot. He's so far on the left, the explosions don't quite take out the whole girder. Brotus is now going to kill off four. Um, and I'm going to probably use a teleport. Well, the thing is, five is alive, which is actually quite rare. So we could potentially YOLO a shot on Otis, but I tend to not like doing that, just because it's it's quite far away. You can't really guarantee that we're going to get. Um, Would it be Uzi or shotgun you YOLO? I'm thinking, I'm thinking oh, Uzi. Mm. Oh, I was, I was, uh, yeah, it's worm, it is worm five, so let's... Um, Yeah, very nice. Again, that's just relying on RNG of the spread of those Uzi shots and just praying. Because by this point we've got no minips, because like the, we've gone so off track that like you know you have to keep the missions very kind of like standard in how you um, how you how you execute them to be able to manipulate the RNG. Once you go off that track, you've no idea what's going to happen. This level again is a very storied history in Worms 2 running. Uh, we used to have a strategy where we just waited for sudden death. Sudden death would come not too, not too much time into this mission. All Worms and sudden death would go down to 1 HP. We could do a big combo chain to take them all out. But now we have a slightly faster one uh, with a slightly different Rube Goldberg machine mechanic. Um, which again, Ruffled is using these oil drums to time these shots. To line everything up correctly. This hot dog plopping in the water. And we're going to be using the zoom function in a moment, which is exclusive to Worms 2 Plus. This wasn't available in the original release of the game. What's this? But we use it a few times in the run to actually line up certain pixel perfect uh, things like teleports, which we're going to do now. We're going to do one teleport here. That seems to be the right position. You'll we'll often see when we're running this game, we're, we press our faces right to the screen to make sure we hit these right pixels. So it is quite a nice quality of life feature to have this zoom in function for okay. certain moves. So got, got what I wanted there, which is Zorky not teleporting and also Fatality. making that hole there. Uh, right, this shot. This is the first little branching path shot where depending on the wind, roughly will have to line up a different bazooka to hit Popper into the water. Or Pop Popper. Yeah. Three, three notches you have to memorise for that one, depending on the wind. The wind we had there was sort of like mid, middle, middling left wind, so... And four goes. See a four. And now, here is... the big one. Right. So, what we do there, it's a little tap bazooka to knock all those worms up there. Worm one. Takes too much damage and dies. And now you're just going to see this big long chain reaction where the grave damage just ends up killing the worms in this pile one by one. And you notice each time they do that, they just go down and down a little bit further. Until... I think I believe this is the right spread. I always, I never quite sure until I see it on this one. <laughs> yeah, this is right. And uh, it's always the worm who is on the leftmost out of the dead worms who explodes first. Definitely. And that means then we knock Otis down there. You'll also notice one nice little touch of this uh, game is that when the graves take too much damage, they explode as well. Which is actually all these little cool exclusive Worms 2 features in this game. Yeah. I've never and then we just left with Worm 2 standing over there wondering what happened. But that's one of the features, actually, I wish they'd kept 
in the Worms series going forward. I don't know if there are maybe, maybe later games that have it, but certainly I thought that was a really cool thing that you don't get in Worms Armageddon. We'll see with the future of Worms Armageddon, because it's, it is a game that is still actively being developed, which is very cool. It's the main second generation Worms game. It has a big competitive scene, very active online community. Um, okay, so this mission... I was timing up this uh, kamikaze, it was, I think it was on 25 seconds. It does a vertical jump, which is not actually for the animation cancel, it's to get the timing right for Stavros over here. Yeah, Stavros is going to uh, give it the big heavy here and drop a dynamite on Worm 3. And uh, I can see you all cringing at the moment looking at this, thinking, oh, this is going to hurt. I mean, it did, but it didn't hurt Worm 3, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> Worm 3 actually comes out of it relatively unscathed. So now here, uh, so we've got bad wind to, on this, we've got yes. uh, rightward wind, so I'm going to have to be a little bit careful with that. You always have to check the wind on this one. And right. slightly overcranked move as well, Yeah, so, that's so it means fine. we're going to have to do a little backup. Do a little we've, backup. We've got backups for all this though. Yeah. So normally what would happen, these two worms would be on the left, or, or plopped already. Um, and it means we can use the aforementioned mechanic of the shotgun flinging our own wing, worm forward yeah. to knock everyone in. Now, ideally, Normally those other two worms would go in Yeah, as well. ideally they would they would end land on the left or at least be far enough left that we can knock them down or they would have gone in immediately but I, uh, my, my rope knock was just a little bit, a little bit too heavy. Uh, but that's fine. So uh, what we're going to do here is Worm 3, we're going to oh, use a backup cami. Oh. 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 Like so. oh. Normally what I would do with Worm 3 is I'd actually use a super sheep to um, kill Hot Dog off. And uh, to do that I'd actually have to guide the super sheep outside of the, uh, the camera area. Um, which is one of my favourite tricks to do, and unfortunately, because I've messed uh, <laughs> messed up the rope knock, you're not going to get to see it. Um, but it's actually an inbuilt mechanic in the game, right? That it displays how far your super sheep is away off screen. There's a yeah. lot of these cool, very subtle mechanics Team 17 put into the Worms games very lovingly for very situational things that so, happen so rarely but have mechanics built in for them. It's very, very cool. It's a very cool engine. Yeah, you're going to see the pixel count actually that Toby just described now because we're going to do like a baseball bat here to kill off uh, these two worms. So, and as you can see there, you notice the arrows followed them there and showed you how many pixels off screen they were. Anyone get me? Actually, you'll see that again in a moment as well because I think we'll be uh, we'll be using a, a cami to get hot dog out. Yeah, nice little quirk of these uh, cavern missions, that pixel counter. Ooh, it took quite a bit of damage, like right? but not, not too much. That's good. Actually, we probably would have been oh. able to use the super sheep if oh. uh, five had died, <laughs> but it would have been a lot longer than we normally would do. Mm. There you go, as you can see. Another, another arrow there just showing you the trajectory off screen. And you would get me. Fantastic. Again, a very difficult mission casually, but so so cool to have got that together. Now this is hmm. probably the longest mission in the run. Oh yeah, this is a big run killer. Very notorious. Fire. Starts, it starts off with uh, the other joint worst first enemy turn in the game, where Gambit just one-shots four with that bazooka. And he messes up a lot of this terrain here as well, which makes yes. knocking worms and moving things around very difficult for the hours and hours we spend rooting this level. Oh. So instead of doing all those knocks, we're going to place a very specific d dynamite and help get the AI to help do a few things for us to, uh, to make this level a bit easier to do. Fingers crossed. Yeah, so that dynamite's done a couple of things. It's created a hole there, which we will need later. It's also knocked Worm 1 over to the right here with 48 HP. This is good because this means that Stavros is now going to fire a bazooka at Worm 1 and kill him off. And uh, the grave damage is going to create a little hole in the terrain there, which we're going to try and use on the next turn. However, it is quite a tough turn, so let's see how we go. The AI getting 48 HP there on the bazooka is, you know, it, it's, it's CPU 5 now, so it can do insane shots. You can just calculate bazooka and grenade shots to hit anything <laughs> on the map that it possibly can. Uh, so we're trying to get this rope knob on Stavros here. 
a little bit too far there. We're trying to get it just on, just so it touches the right edge of these pixels. This little pixel mark. And that way, we can deal with Sorky and Stavros, hopefully, in one kamikaze. So if this is lined up correctly... Yeah, so the, I, what's I, meant I... to happen there is Stavros goes into the hole that we created with the grave damage. But it's okay, this is not... Um, we don't need to reset this yet. We can still, not, we can yeah, still I'm not up. sure how this is going to affect the AI going forward, so that's the only concern here. Pray for so this dynamite is uh, this is legit. Basically, uh, over here didn't. For those who can't remember the past are doomed to repeat it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> didn't he didn't take Stavros's lesson from the last What's map? Doing? Uh, so now we are going to um, use a holy hand grenade again, and uh, this is going to be a double hey. holy hand grenade. Oh. Might be wondering which of these surrounding worms this. Hey. is going to get killed off here. Hey. We're going to hide in this little hidey hole and bosh. There we go. So Flossy, Flossy there gets uh, killed off as well. Now this is a this is the turn that can be a little bit scary here. Butch does a, a bazooka on worm three. Fire. Um, okay, we're fine. A very very occasionally that can actually kill off worm three, which given no that they're left. the only worm we got left is, you know, uh, straight back to the beginning. If that happens. And this here is one of the most finicky rogue knocks in the game that Ruffles going to try and attempt. I still don't do this in my runs yet. Um, very impressive that Mad Black and Ruffles can get this. Oh, very nice. Just You can see Hot Dog just scooting under him as he parachutes down. Very well done. And then Ming Vars on Butch here, just to uh, kill them off. You notice what happens with the, the shards from the Vars there, is they all go straight up, and because Butch is knocked towards the ceiling, then they all explode on level with Butch as well, so he takes the full brunt of the damage. And now we just need to figure out a way of um, killing off Stavros. I think it's a good time to talk about the ninja roping. Um, as I say, you have five repeat swings, which as Ruffle travels over here, he has to be careful to remember because you can so casually, once you get used to five repeat swings, it's oh, a lot of leeway. This ninja rope also has basically no friction in Worms 2. The skill ceiling with the Worms 2 ninja rope is basically infinite um, because it has no friction. So you can get extremely fast, crazy movements with it, um, which makes some very cool routing opportunities in this game. Place the diner and just have a little escape. Perfect. Was being a little, little careful on the roping there because I have lost it on the Stavros cleanup before by just being a bit careless and falling into the water. So, and of course that's free, because it's longest mission in the game. It's like three or four minutes lost. Yeah, oh, it's a huge time loss. When you're practicing and it's very frustrating. I wish we had save states or something, but alas, mm. uh, we don't. And this is the final mission from Worm and Corner. Should probably explain what that name means in a minute, Toby. But let's uh, let's just talk about um, this uh, horrendous blood. mission first. Yes. So we're um, going to go for an Uzi here, which uh, we're going to try and do really, really specifically on the timing. I basically found that at 27 seconds, I found it as a quad kill, but there's a set of frames at 27 seconds that have a variety of outcomes. Okay, so um, we didn't get the quint kill here. So. Is this the half circle, is it called? I think it's Nessie. Is it the Nessie? So we have a whole kind of infographic of like seven or eight different outcomes from when you fire the Uzi, which frame you got, and different kind of backups to how to finish the level in post that. Um, but you can even finish this level in two turns. Um, okay, so it's not gone well so far. So I'm actually going to do a reset on that. Again, I can't see my I can't see my notes that well. So, what was that? Should have been second barrel. Oh, 23. So, oh, wait, you were early there, I think. Maybe. Yeah, this mission has become one of the most complex missions in the game with routing because there's so many branching paths you have to remember and look at um, if you want to do it really, really optimally. Hmm. So here we go again. We're going to go at. They're just past 27 oh. seconds is the set of like seven or eight frames that all work. So get this ah, that's much better. We get the quint kill. Yeah, quint kill there, so this is uh, 
This is a much, much easier thing to do with now. This is uh, 26 seconds on the Uzi. Yeah, I'm cool chicken. It's the flame damage that you see on the girders that we use to know which version, of the, which frame we've got precisely. I said, I said 26 seconds, I was slightly too early, but uh, yeah, that's fine. Gambit is we not going to be too, yeah, Gambit's not too hard to deal with here. It's going to go Plopper for Worm is two. also inert. Oh yeah, Plopper, Plopper is uh, pretty much passive in this mission because there's nothing Plopper can do. It's just he can't aim beyond that threshold because of his programming. So let's, uh, I'm going to use a Teleside. Oh, yeah, no, I'll deal with uh, Gambit here, actually. Or shall we... Oh, let's do it. We might as well demonstrate the Teleside. So yeah. basically, um, you notice the HP imbalance in this uh, mission, where all our worms have one and all the enemies have 50. Uh, you can actually use that to our advantage. If you do what I just did there and teleport a worm higher than the uh, full damage threshold, then uh, when they land, they will basically just die. And you can use the explosion there to just kill them straight off, like so. And we can use the kind of the numpad to aim the cursor, which is really nice to make sure that you we can just aim straight from the worm, we don't have to try and judge the uh the shot. So here I missed those shots there, but again plopper is um not anything ah, that's a we need to worry about here, so gonna... there we go. Alright, nice. so yeah, we're out of out of worm and corner, which is uh, a golf reference I believe. Yes. Uh, the Masters, Augusta National, that happens every year. There's this notorious set of holes near the start of the, the back nine that are very notoriously difficult, and then once players are through it, they're okay, and a similar thing happens here in Worms 2 at like 23 to 31, notoriously difficult. Now we're clear, now we can breathe a little bit. There's some very fun missions coming up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, including this one, where after, well, have a look at this grenade damage. Wow. Big, and it's one of my favourite. This is one of my favourite enemy first turns actually of the run because it, they get two two self kills straight away. Now, using the cheese to line up this oh, shot, yeah. and we're relying on mind frames. A good one. Yes, he's got it. In so, a mouth. So, and sorry, that was probably go. a bit loud, but like, uh, yeah, that's the uh, the so the triple kill there. Basically, like that is frame perfect. That so the way the mine detection is uh, such that like to be able to get all three of those worms killed off like that, you have to get it exactly on the right frame. Watch this! Take cover! And we've never we've never got it into a face. marathon before now. But yeah, that's fantastic. Anyway, that makes up for all of Worm and Corner. Fatality. Absolutely. That just saves us a turn because we can finish things right here with this grenade. I know it's I know it's cooler if I just pass it off like it's nothing, but like whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, we need the hype. It's fantastic. So yeah, that's one one yeah, turn fewer yeah, we uh, need on that mission there. And this is again one of the coolest hey. missions in the game. Um, we're going to be doing a really weird first turn where we're going to use this oh. blowtorch and go to the right for seemingly no reason. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't kill any uh, worms. It doesn't even get out of the um, eyeball that he's been trapped in. What gives? Uh, well, um, this is a significant AI manipulation that we're going to be doing here. So, Gambit is uh, going to do a shotgun on Worm Two, uh, owing to what we've just done. Uh, first shot is going to just take a little bit of damage from two and just create this little uh, pit here. Second one, he decides he can't actually get a good shot on two, so he's going to aim at worm three instead, creating a, a little wall in the terrain which we're going to use on the next turn. Something to note, by the way, you're not going to see it that well in the moment, but Plopper and Butch, we've got these two worms at the side here. Just remember that they're there. Whoops. Now we've got one of the most intense oh. turns in the game, so we're going to rope over to Otis. Once we're over to Otis, we are going to knock him into the water. His parachute. Let's have a Which go is... at that. <laughs> I don't know why my roping was, uh, mojo wasn't coming out there. Oh. And that's, yeah, so we'll be knocking Otis in the water, and then we're going to have to climb back up between these two faces. It can be quite... If you're, when you first start trying it, it'd be quite difficult, but... Mm. Um, I think we've all trained up pretty well that we can do it very consistently now. It's subtle. You, if you if you press too many arrow keys, you'll knock into walls and things. It's a very narrow, 
very narrow passage you have to get back up to. Yeah, so 30, 30 seconds per turn on this uh, mission, which obviously you, you can't see at home, but... And yeah, so we had it's happened a couple of times in this run where the the, the, the magic rope fingers just don't want to uh, come out to play. <laughs> but we'll see we'll see if we can get it this time around. It's so another reason why I think starting with Worms again is good. You can kind of train up your roping ability before coming to yeah. Worms Two, where the rope is, is used so heavily. Oh. Okay, this is better. Yeah, it's very smooth. Select the parachute whilst we're on the rope so that we can survive this rope knock. And we're going to travel back up the faces. Oh dear. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, this will be tight. This is uh, Mission Impossible star. What's the matter with me? Hey. Oh. <laughs> yeah, nice. So yeah, we have one sec. I don't know if you heard the countdown there, but we had one second left to get that done. And Plopper gets knocked in, and Butch gets knocked in. And we had the Swag 2 survive as well, which is, doesn't always happen. Yeah. Very nice. oh, that's the old woman weapon there, by the way, which... Uh, that's that, that's the only outing she gets in, uh, in, in this uh, run, if I recall correctly. No, yeah, it is, isn't it? We used to have yeah. two, but then uh, one of them, we found a better strap for it. Oh, you're dozy, so 1-1 being there also means that Stavros fires um, a bazooka at Wilma. And we can now use this kind of dozy. We aim specifically to the left to make sure they both block. And uh, you okay, know, but the sudden death also always happened there. No, it's like, because I took so long on the, uh, the second oh, turn there that it, it came in. But no, normally I'm quick enough that that doesn't happen. We are going to try and get sudden death on this mission, though. Hey. We're actually going to deliberately yeah. uh, tr try and trigger sudden death because that's going to make it uh, a little bit easier on the strat that I'm doing. Yeah, there is a new strat here, but it's extremely technical with the rope. What's it's very me? difficult. So this is definitely the marathon safe strat. And there's this unique tech to this strat that makes it very interesting. Yeah, you've, to, you've seen my roping in 30 seconds. Like, try doing three kills on this one in 20. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, um, we're going for this old one. So what happens here is we're letting the turn time count down on these first two turns here. Um, count all the way down to one, and What's then we this? do our move. Uh, the first two moves are kamikaze. And actually, the third one will be a kamikaze as well, so it's... An entirely kamikaze based Check mission of which there's not that many of those in this one anymore. Oh. So here we're using the bazooka to aim the ninja rope below its normal threshold, much like the bat trick. Um, that just, it helps uh, guarantee, it, it doesn't guarantee, but it helps make sure that hopefully sudden death comes. I know you guys can't see when he's just waiting there, but the, the bottom left is kind of flashing where the timer is to one like flashing red and uh, got to make sure you fire it within that time yeah those beeps that increase in pitch uh, that's the sound of, um, of the time running out. so here is uh after this turn here if this has gone all right then we should get sudden death which will make all the worm hp go down to one zorky's in the right position so yeah. fingers yeah. crossed okay here we go oh fantastic So one right left here. Uh, so just going to drop down here Ow! and then do a cami Ow! here to hit Zorky and then to knock Plopper into Butch there. And the mine went off as well. Sometimes that's a dud. It doesn't really matter because the grave damage will still kill them off. And you would get me. But we save a few seconds doing that. Yeah. Great. And next mission is, I would say, the penultimate run killer of the game. Uh, in fact, both the last two big run killers are shopper missions, and this is another one of those shopper missions where you can't really just do it with rope knocks because the positions are just so elaborate and you don't have enough ropes. So we're going to be manipulating um, very specific crate drops here. Uh, this is probably the most difficult level in the game casually, so it's amazing to see it utterly destroyed when the strap comes off. Especially if Otis does not teleport to that level. Another thing to note is this is the only shopper mission with booby trap crates, and we are trying yeah. to do very specific movements here to avoid setting those off. So. Hey, me. Here we go. Hey, hey, jump, hey. 
do a left jump, do a right jump. Down. All of that is kind of with scripted movement to try and make sure that this works out for us and it's not a booby trap. Cross your fingers. Okay. All right. So that's the that's the crate farming bit of the mission out of the way. And then you get this homing min, Ming vase uh, crate that drops here, which Plopper goes for, which um, is actually, it sounds like a bad thing, letting such a good weapon fall into their hands, but actually it gets this teleport out of them, and we're going to use that to our advantage on this turn. Notice on the right here there's five enemy worms very close, and we have a banana bomb, so fingers crossed that works out for us. Yeah, we're firing at a certain time, with one little nudge forward. So now we've got to hope, guys, for no Otis teleport. If he does, it doesn't matter. We still win the mission, but it's very cool when he uh, doesn't teleport. Yeah, we haven't found a manipulation to stop Otis from teleporting here. We did, he oh, didn't, yes. though, so that is extremely good. Absolutely makes a mockery of this mission now. So, so yeah. this homing airstrike, this is worms to exclusive weapon, which just makes it so good that it's actually in the run. We're lining up with the top right of Stavros's name, and we're nudging across Hi, pixel by pixel using the number. Knock him over. And get one cluster to go across. There you go. <laughs> oh, so basically, uh, homing missiles uh, in the airstrike there, they have a fixed amount of time that they will home in on the target for. If they haven't exploded after that time, then they will just... Um, they will stop homing and they'll just fall to the ground like that. And Mablack found that, like, you, if you do that one there where you've got the one missile that actually knocks the two worms down, then the other missile there will actually then eventually just land on that oil drum and kill them off. It's, I would say, probably one of the best strats in the entire game. And Ruffle just executed it to perfection. That's probably the best you could ever best hope to do that mission. So it's very impressive, very cool oh. to get that in a marathon. Oh yeah, we had no cleanup on that whatsoever, and that's the main reason that mission can be a run killer. Because uh, if you have to do cleanup, then you have to start crate farming, and it gets a bit, it can get a bit long. So now we're, we're doing certain shotgun angles. This one to the left, we made sure not to actually move our initial ninja rope firing angle, so that we didn't have to change anything about that shot. And Stavros here, we're aiming not on the first. Oh. Pixel where it goes up, oh, it gets that little smooth fissure terrain, but the next one up. And he'll actually go over that barrel um, and clear him out. Yeah, and then here we're going to go for a quintuple kill on this one. You notice Flossie and Butch standing at the side there. Um, They're on a kind of quite a, quite a smooth slope incline to the left, which is yeah. very useful for us. So here Ruffle's going to rope over with Worm 2. You can kind of use the one of the barrels to line up your shot with this dynamite to make sure we kind of want it on the upper left edge. That's a little bit inside, but I think that will still work out. Gambit! Yeah. Anything on that left edge there or just inside the crater will guarantee that you get the... You can still get them without that, but it's a little, a lot more risky. Okay. Would you mind if I quickly talk about some incentives? Go for it! Yeah, perfect time. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, we have four incentives left for this marathon. For Rumu, we have the laundry hamper therapy uh, incentive, which means that we want to give our little laundry hamper some love. Uh, we are currently $24 out of the 100 that we need. Um, for Sabotica, we have bring back the toys, which means that we want to bring, uh, we want to find and bring all of the toys back to space with us, which currently we only have a single dollar in it out of the $50 that we need. Uh, for my life, we have the Achievement Challenge run, which means that the runner is going to... Uh, hold on. Uh, our runner wants to complete the Achievement Challenge. It's a particular level in a single, practi practically flawless attempt with a specific plane. We are currently on the $55 out of the 100 that we need. And for Phasmophobia, we have the Apocalypse Update Map Choice bit war. Uh, we currently have Camp Woodwind, uh, no sorry, we have Sunny Meadows, the restricted version, in the lead with $50. <laughs> and we have Camp Woodwind in second place with a single dollar. So if you want to see any of these donations happen, or if you want to see your favourite map in Phasmophobia, get your donations in. Thank you very much. Notice that cow there didn't operate as normal, but that cow really flung the worm. Now this is one of the most technical execution levels in the game. It's extreme rope knocking, you get first turn, you're straight into the action. 
Uh, we knock that first worm down, making sure Stavros doesn't move. We knock the second worm down. And we're going to knock it, go up and try and get Zorky in the water as well. We've got 10 seconds left of the timer, that's good. We're going to use the cheese to line up this shotgun shot. Fire, I believe that angle looks good. Zorky will go into the water and we just got to... I think, I'm not sure. Oh, we'll try it. See, it's very small on my screen. Sorry. Oh, no, we got it. There we go. Yes! Fantastic. All in one turn. Blink and you miss it. One of the most really technical, hard, challenging levels really in the game. Really hard that one. So after a lot of plotting and aiming at certain angles and so you suddenly have this very high APM action level that just goes by really quickly. Uh, this is uh, Gunger to 6. This, um, this one's... One of the easier ones now, actually. Um, yes, the, it's, this is the only level in the game I'm sad about the old strat going, because we used to <laughs> boost off of a mine, and we had a bunch of specific pixels that worked for the mine boost. Uh, but now it's much simpler and easier. We're just doing an Uzi shot on a shotgun so shot at certain angles. Yeah, these worms notice they got one HP, so we just have to nudge them. So Otis is fine there. Yeah. So, to, only one so more basically, what the game does at this point in the I've run is you notice that sudden death is going to get called immediately in every remaining mission. Uh, sometimes, which is going to make all the enemy worms HP at one. It also is rising the water up between every turn. Um, Team Seventeen, I think, put this in the game to try and scare. Uh, players um, in the later part of the run as if you know to sort of instill some panic in them but actually for speed running it's fantastic because it means the latter section of the game is so much quicker as well we're gonna see a whole series of Rube Goldberg machines hinted at earlier in the level evening time that it's going to become a staple of this end game mm. as we approach the final stages now we just get the right notch for Stavros and we got it very good. That's, that can be a, very, a little bit finicky, that shot. Yeah, and then oh, dropping down like... there to just do some great oh, damage to get rid of Flossie. Those platforms look like they are uh, like exactly lined up, but it's just the little, little the one, the one underneath is just slightly poking out. So. Okay, so um, this mission has a big Rube Goldberg machine in it. Um, we are going to kill off five of these enemy worms in one shot, if we get it correctly. And uh, remember we mentioned the lore of the game earlier? Um, the passwords in the game. Actually, if you put all the passwords together, they spell out the lore. Well, once we've got this uh, shot going, we've got some time to kill. So, gather around, children, and hear the story of Worms 2. First, though, let's get this right. Yeah, all these grave damages are going to give us a little, little time to tell the story, which is very nice. Uh, we're looking here at this mine frame, which we did not get. Like, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. It always, always happens. I set up the law and then I keep people waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, basically, we wanted to. We nudge forward four times. We use a terrain marker, but we use a terrain marker just like on the um, the previous high action level two levels ago. We use a terrain marker and then turn around. So we line it up with one side and then turn around to so mirror images. Um, and we're trying to fire like. On the second, there's different timings. We do it on like I do it very late twenty one as a backup, but I've always hit it on the second. And that should give you the right mind frame. Um, because it, well, the worm that was missing was flossy there, so that's the worm you've got to watch for. And see if we grab a flossy. There we go. There it is. That's it. I waited a little bit that time because I was just, you know, wasn't quite sure. Yeah. So yeah, all these are now going to uh, die in order. So here is the unedited story of Worms 2. Once upon a time, there were some small worms who got very, very annoyed and decided to go to the moon in order to wipe out their vicious enemy counterparts. They developed some really cool weapons such as banana bombs and magic bullets. They trained all night and every day so they would become proficient in their wormy ways. Sometimes they would shoot grannies just for fun and laugh about it in the evening time. We apologise on behalf of all the territories that we went to the trouble of translating Worms 2 into, but we didn't have time to translate these passwords. Not that they need to be done. We suppose that you are really expecting to see a wonderful cheat mode when finish the missions. You're right. Including the grammatical error at the end. Yeah. That's, 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 that's sick in brackets. When when you it's supposed to be when you finish the missions, but the uh, they they left out the you. 
so. And uh, there, you'll notice we also got a, uh, a AI minute there on Stavros. Because they've only got one HP at this point, the enemy worms, okay. then uh, they're not quite as um, as sharp in their shots as they should be. And whilst we took the time to tell the story, you could also take the time for a toilet break. Yes. Uh, in that mission, which is nice to have in the middle of the run. Well, it's right near the end of the run, isn't it? So it's, 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 sort of, true, it's not really true. worth a toilet break at that point. Um, and that uh, grenade we did there is just one more little AI manipulation here. Zork, he's kind of out of ideas, so uh, he fires a bazooka at the wall of the cavern, and the mine does a Columbo. And just like, yeah, one more thing, and then just knocks him into the water. And let the comedy way the uh, the question mark appears above his head just before <laughs> it happens. As he questions his, his life choices What there. did I just do? <laughs> <laughs> Here's another Rube Goldberg machine for you guys. These are really fun. So here, one bazooka is all it takes to kill off all of the enemy worms in this one. Uh, what happened there is we knocked Flossie onto the mine there to knock Stavros in. Worm 1 is now going to explode and knock Gambit to the left. That's going to take Gambit's health and Gambit is now going to blow up and knock Worm 2 off the girder, down onto Alaska and onto Butch, who's the only real outlier in the equation here. And the grave damage is now going to kill Butch off. And then the only one who's still left with any health from the enemies is Plopper, who will be killed off very shortly by Zorky. The password for the previous American mission uh, was decided to, and this one is expecting to. So they've mirrored the uh, the Americas quite nicely. Yeah. Well, my favourite password is coming up in a couple of missions' time, but it's a uh, cheat mode when. <laughs> it's just I think that's I think that's sentiments we've all had at some point in our lives. Holding our cutlery and banging it on the table. Yeah. Cheap mode when? Cheap mode when? So this is the, I would say the last big run killer Special delivery. in the game. Once again, it's a shopper mission, and yeah, Toby, take it away. <laughs> so again, we're buffering crates, get them to instantly drop, and we're going to use a teleport here. It's using the zoom function, using the numpad to scroll across, and scroll across some pixels. And do a teleport at a certain time. It uses the mine to knock our own worm, knock other worms, knock into the positions we need to. And there goes proper down. Brilliant. I'll get the enormous thing. This next one is a little bit harder. Special Notice that the water is rising in this level, and we're going to be using that to our advantage. We're basically trying to pile all the worms down into the dr eventual drowning threshold as each turn the water slowly rises. So on this one. We're going to aim up, Help. get that little pixel, about 13 seconds, <laughs> yeah. that's harder than it looks, right? Yeah. To get their specific place is a bit tricky, we don't have that much time to do it, um, and getting the timing like it raise to go wrong, so it's very cool to, to get right. Now there's five crates on the terrain, um, so no more crates will actually spawn, but we still buffer some space anyway to get this Ninja rope out straight away, knock Zorky into the drowning threshold, and this is probably the second hardest rope knock in the game, I would say, which is the Gambit Butch rope knock. And he's got it, lovely. And we'll see if the final worm teleports here, uh, to send which strat we need to do. No telly, very nice. Okay, nice. So now we're going to go over and knock him into the drowning threshold, and then use the most powerful weapon in the game. Yeah. Don't take your eyes off it, it's immense. Ow, 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 ow. Coward. Skip go. Whoa. And look what we did. <laughs> and that was very... Normally you have to walk back up there, but Ruffled landed in the perfect position to instantly uh, skip go, which was very you. nice. Very nice optimization. So here is cheat mode when. Cheat mode when. Brand new strat on this as well. Yes. It's gone from looking looking like traditional Worms gameplay to becoming another on rails, teleport, very pixel perfect positioning, AI manipulation. Full on, like this level has joined the fold to be more like it's Worms 2 Brethren. Use the use the I use the terrain there. I don't know if Ruffles uses Gambit's name. Use the terrain. There I use I use uh, the zero from Gambit's HP to line that up. 
Ah, uh, nice. I use like the corner of the end of the mm. cursor against the terrain. And then we're going to use uh, Hot Dog's name as well for the next teleport, which we need to do. Which at... isn't specific on the Y axis, but it yeah. needs to be on the X axis yeah, correctly. Okay. Yeah. Water is once again rising, as you can see. Okay, just got it there. <laughs> yeah. Because that's the nice thing about the numpad is that we can adjust by a pixel just at the end of something, mm. rather than trying to get it with a mouse. Because you know you can. I've done this before where you've been What's like this? just literally like two pixels off, and this strat does not mm. work. Like the yeah. AI behavior is completely different. I'll get me. You notice Flossy up there, we need to get him down. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see if we can use this dynamite to coax Flossy out of his way. Yes, the Holy Ming weapon scheme in this uh, mission, although by this point in the game, there's no Holy or Ming in them holy anymore. Does it, but, um, but you do get a generous supply of dynamite, and we're going to be using uh, that for uh, the rest What's this? of these turns. Lovely chat. I know you haven't been able to see the wind or the time of the whole run, but hopefully as this drowning threshold codes up, it should appear on screen for you guys. So you can see, if you've never played this game, you can see what the wind and the timer meter looks like that we've been judging with. Hey. Oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> so yeah, a little dynamite there, two jumps forward to get them in, and that dynamite, as you can see, gets everyone into this little pile here. Oh, yeah, does Apart from like... Butch, well Stavros is about to go, but Butch, it's now Butch's turn. So let's see how Butch deals with this situation. He decides he wants to go with his mates, so... <laughs> Brooch! <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, yes, here we go then. Just oh. need to polish this off now with one more <laughs> stick of dynamite. We just use the slight upslope to line up that dynamite shot. Get them all to yeah, go in together. Another quintuple kill. Yeah. And you would get that mission used to be hairy and you'd have to always do a bit improv and clean up, but now it's... On rails are very controlled, it's very nice. So this is the less uh, irritating question mark mission. Um, this one is uh, its actually much easier, even though it looks pretty scary. And we do once again lose an enemy, uh, one of our worms uh, on the before we even get a turn. Um, however, the first turn is pretty elaborate. So I'm going to focus on that for the time being. We're going to introduce a new piece of tech that hasn't been used in any other part of the run so far, which is um, tabbing around our worms. So we use tab to change worm, and here we're going to change, we only have three worms, we change around nine times oh. through the worms. Um, magically, that advances the RNG a step and allows us to, to get a self kill that we need later on. So here we cover this pixel, and do we get it? Yes, we do. What a combo shot. That's, that's a ruffled classic, that is. <laughs> Well, I, I did. I did find that shot, but um, we couldn't use it for a while. And the main reason we couldn't is because of Stavros. And I'm actually not entirely sure we got the minute right. So I just want to check. No. Okay. The wind is uh, one arrow right, which is correct. So basically, Stavros is the big problem with the routing of this mission, or was the big problem because they are off to the periphery here. And it's really hard to find a way of dealing with them that doesn't compromise your other worms. But by doing those nine select worms, uh, before we did that first turn there, it manipulates Stavros consistently into getting that self-kill. Here we're going to teleport onto the left edge of the Alpha Flossy. And you might think and it... that looks pretty dangerous, but uh, actually, weirdly, it's Gambit who gets the turn when we do that. And uh, once again, Gambit gets a self-kill. <laughs> so... so Several of the worms in this one, we're just letting them deal with themselves rather than having to worry about it. It does feel sometimes this game is a bit 4D chess as you're trying to manipulate the AI as well as your own. Here we just make sure we don't accidentally hit ourselves because we only have one HP. So that's why we do that little jump and set up to get the cursor just below the and question mark. The next mission is the final one, so time will be when the congratulations screen comes up. But uh, it's very short, blink and you miss it. Toby, tell them what this is about. Yeah, we just simply switch to worm two, and we've got to get the right, uh, just one sprite change, triple barrel explosion, all the fireworks go off, and then we jump to get Gambit, and it's done. It's as simple as that. The RNG doesn't mess around as long as you get that right. Get the yeah, and no replay as well. Yeah. And time. 
Fantastic. And we get the golden ending as well. Yes, we didn't we didn't accidentally quit out to the menu, so we didn't have to use passwords and therefore you get the uh, the golden text box here, which gives you a little cheat. Try Super Shopper in the game. Spoiler alert, it doesn't actually work in the missions, so there's no NG plus um, opportunities there, unfortunately. But that was Worms 2. That was uh, all 45 of the missions uh, done in hopefully not a, a too awful amount of time. Um, so, yeah, uh, if you're interested in running any of the Worms games, then please do join the uh, Worms speedrunning Discord, um, run by me, Mablack, and Psychotropic. Um, we, uh, yeah, we, 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 we originally just started with Worms Arm again, but it's now expanded to contain uh, pretty much almost the entire series at this point, I think. And, um, yeah, Toby, do you want to uh, give yourself a shout-out? Yeah, sure. Thank you, Ruffled. So... Again, join our Worm Speedrunning Discord because it's a really exciting time to do Worm Speedruns right now because all the other games are starting to come through. Everyone's kind of congregating um, and there's lots of information being shared there. So please join us there. Um, and go watch Ruffle Bricks' streams as well, which is fantastic Worm streams. Bless you. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, yes. twitch.tv slash Ruffled Bricks. I do predominantly speedrun Worms games at the moment or I do occasionally do uh, other things as well but yeah thank you very much to indiethon for having us and uh, please do keep supporting the uh, wonderful cause and um yeah uh, zelda anything else that you want to say um yeah before we head over to the next game would you like to know your final time what was it uh it was one hour 47 minutes and eight seconds okay so even Fantastic. even with the uh the significant mistakes in the middle section we still came in significantly underestimate so i'm happy with that very good i'm glad thank you guys so much for running this game for us um coming up next we have trek to yomi run by Ashma. Yes. uh so don't go anywhere and with that this is also my the end of my hosting shift so i will be handing you over to tally and uh, take care everybody see you next time Bye-bye. Peggy 7. does that okay we're off now okay, yeah cool. it's an ad lane all right fantastic awesome Yeah, yeah right. I, I remember like like it's like the 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 mob placement, like the number of people you have to fight, mm. is like different. In um, yeah, I forget. But hard's just medium, right? Just harder. I don't remember what hard's differences were. Uh hard, more enemy health, more enemies, and uh, less okay. pickups. <laughs>